so then we are back with modern understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word and this translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzaelic lineage so then we can understand the time of the end as per Yeshayahu the prophet we always make mention of the spring feast the autumn feast and also the returning of the cities of the Mashiach laid a waste for many centuries. As we read it in Yeshayahu the prophet, it's always important making a very nice research of revelation known as Gala, where then yod he vav he in his absolutely infinite wisdom always existed, exists, and shall exist. Then we must make decisions and understand what's going on in the world. Because Revelation, the 20th chapter, then indicates the time related with a thousand years of the Mashiach, and a thousand years without the understanding of the Mashiach and the force behind is yod he vav he in his instructions so then understandably chapter 20 states that he saw then an angel that descended from heaven having then the key of the pit in a great chain in his hand and he sees the dragon the old serpent who is the deceiver and Satan obviously the person that translated this document did not know the proper words because if you take the time and you read Enoch you understand very precisely where those words should be at so the person that made this translation obviously was in a fast pace. They wanted to get this document as fast as they could put together. Because the people, they were some of them understanding the truth, some of them they weren't understanding a lie. A lot of those people, they want a lie over the truth. And they want the manipulation of the people. So then the people would become obedient to the state rather than become obedient to the kingdom to come. Not saying that person should not obey the state, that's not the point. The point is, there is a definite proper understanding of these prophecies. Since each person then places his or her life on a line. Because when the time comes then the soul of the person is going to be obviously on a balance. Some people, for some reason, they think they are saved and besides their behavior, they don't believe that they are lost. So then they go on as if they were given a license to sin and unfortunately they are not taking the time to evaluate these periods of time so then as far as, as the scripture itself this obviously is a Greco-Roman translation it's not the original manuscript so then he states then and he sees the dragon the old serpent who is deceiver and Satan in fact, Satan does not exist. It's a word that does not exist in the Hebrew script. So it was a word invented. Deceiver and slanderer, obviously. And then the serpent has nothing to do with it. Because it's not the reptile that we are speaking of, but it's spirit that came down from its higher position. And unfortunately came down into the earth. So then, and it states, And he cast him into the pit and closed and sealed upon him, and that he will not deceive the nations for more until the thousand years were then completed. 
that is a situation with this instruction put him in a pit for a thousand years that he should not deceive the nations this is a very interesting point because the nations are in fact deceived that's the problem then when we take a translation from the original manuscripts from a country that is not as nearly related with the culture of Yashrum or the holy city obviously they would translate this in a wrong way so then if we observe during the period of time roughly a thousand years ago you find then the Yerushalayim or then Yashurum was invaded in a spiritual understanding this was then the point where then the old order as they did understand back then became a new world order that's where the term comes from so then when we read this portion of the scripture we understand that our country is obviously an outpost of the British Empire even though a lot of people they think we fought against them in roughly a couple of hundred years ago and this country then was independent but truly this country is not independent but yet is very strongly linked with Great Britain if they were independent they would not be speaking English so the point of the situation is easily understandable is that the Great Britain had a huge influence in the world for 800 years the United States had the last couple of hundred years making a total of a thousand now Winston when he was then in charge of the Admiralty and he was the Prime Minister of Great Britain during the time of the war or mostly the war period he himself many times has said during the time that Great Britain for a thousand years it's quite interesting because sometimes people are not focused in what the truth is being spoken besides the lines that are so interestingly found so people can understand what the war was then leading towards but there were amazingly a lot of truths that he spoke while not being the focus so the time of the restoration period then if you read Revelation chapter 1 8 a couple of chapters before you find then this truly is for the people that are mostly in Ethiopia and they are being obviously gathered up not only in Ethiopia at this point in time but here Sheyahu 11 states the many people from the northern part of Africa and then including Libya, Syria and many other those countries these are then the remnant at this time of the restoration period where then the divine himself is going to do what his prophet then told him to say many centuries ago so then the reason why obviously you know the West is in a big trouble countries in South America are in trouble the whole Western atmosphere is obviously in trouble and then you find the economy of the East truly having a huge momentum and then we understand the preparations spoken of by Daniel the prophet 
So China obviously is then becoming the new world power because the East must rise. And then the Soviet Union obviously is back and they must become the protectors of the Chinese system or then the new Chinese market. Daniel the prophet was then a spokesperson on behalf of the divine but he was an instructor of Gentiles more than his own people because as he explains many times he was dealing with nations and kingdoms And then, while we understand the nations and what they are doing, there is a definite, strong sense of Eastern restoration. Now, when we read then Yerushayahu, the 23rd chapter, you find a section there very interesting. Because some people may ask, why then jumping from one place to the scripture to the other place of the scripture? Because there are layers related with each understanding from the feasts that what is speaking of. So when there is a layer related with a certain feast, you have certain sections that they should harmonize. It's not like going to church and then being manipulated by those people who are in the front they think in themselves they are being examples for other people when they are not the example is Yod He Vav He however they can become mentors but some of them they don't understand the fine line of taking the place of Yod He Vav He in their members versus becoming a mentor. This means a stealing of position. Thousands upon thousands of these scoundrels pastors, they have taken the position of yod he vav he rather than becoming mentors of His Holy Word. So then, how can a person understand how can they become mentors? Well, Yamashia yeah, ben Yosef was very clear regarding this. Because the scripture itself reveals the divine speaking from behind, yet very straightforward. He explains when we read in Acts second chapter these are the acts of Ruach HaKodashah known as the Holy Spirit and he states very plainly gather yourselves where then we used to gather around not in a temple because during the time of the Mashiach when he died obviously he was persecuted and they could not by any means taking the time and holding visits at the temple because they were not authorized to do gatherings over there now if you are ridiculously stupid believing that the divine was somewhat involved in the human situations and then by some miraculous reasons then he would take the people away and let the Mashiach and his people join him in a the temple then you are ridiculously stupid there are some situations we have to define what should you believe versus the mysticism you were given from your own parents. 
certain things are simply ridiculous. When you are reading, for instance, the birth of the Hamashiach ben Yosef, where do you find in the original manuscript that he was in a manger? Where do you find it? There isn't. It was a blunt disregard for the scripture the situation of a savior born in a manger in the midst of animals it's absolutely crazy it's incredibly crazy so then since the time of the restoration period is then obviously restoring the originals back to their places and then the momentum going towards the east that's why you find at the end of the thousand years so the situation is a section of the chapter 20 of Revelation does not belong in the 20th chapter of Revelation time-wise because we are then establishing a prelude and situations and circumstances that must take place until reaches the Yom Kippur or then the vengeance or then the autumn feast another problem with this Greco-Roman translation is simply you have yod he vav he in his function of judge or Shafat and then mixed with salvation there is no salvation in the autumn feast that basic Hebrew understanding though you don't find revelation in the original Hebrew because those documents were then destroyed that's why when you read then Revelation in the Greco-Roman translation as you want to begin to understand Hebrew this thing is rushed through so badly you can barely make sense out of it it's so badly mixed up and you know that a person is writing this is writing very fast so there is no salvation during the time of Yom Kippur that's the judgment, the autumn feast. Has it not then the Yod He Vav He said the vengeance is his and his alone? There is no salvation during time of vengeance. Salvation was already brought by Hamashiach ben Yosef. So crazily enough, you find then later chapter 18 couple of chapters prior of 20 this particular chapter is solely related with the time of the restoration period so then since we understand that this document revelation is badly mixed up badly translated rushed it through you read then that there is no Yeshua in Hebrew when you translate this content into Hebrew you can't mix them the nature of the Hebrew language does not let you use Yeshua and Shafat at the same time would be a person speaking of you I want to buy this much of metal and you translate in a form where then oh that person there stole my metal we're talking about stealing regarding the metal or you're talking about somebody that is dealing with metal 
This is what roughly what we are dealing with. There is no Yasha or Yeshua in Revelation. So the restoration period brings then the truth and then people are more aware of of the writings and the sequences that we should focus on. Nobody's talking about faith yet. We're talking about only facts. Now when people build their faith in the wrong facts, then they get defensive. Because for centuries they were then lied to. Now the point is, then Yahanan saw this light that was from heaven. And then interestingly he say, states very plainly on a fourth chapter, And he saw and a gate was opened in heaven and the first voice then obviously came and spoke with him as with a voice of a shofar. Uh, the voice of Shofar, uh, Shafat, uh, as a voice of judgment. So then, there is the object of Shofar, but you don't talk like a Shofar. Now this person or this voice was the divine is speaking in a tone of vengeance or then a tone of judgment. That's what this recording is for. You already have sections of Hebrew being properly translated even though this piece of translated material is extremely mixed up. But some people because of their lack of study they only want pleasures in life, you know, going to the beach, having some fun, having a drink, having a brandy, enjoying this life, believing that at the end they are going to be weighted with their bad and what they did was right. And if the right that they have done then outweighs then what they did bad, then for some miraculous reasons, then the divine is going to forget his holy Torah, And he's going to let them go where? Because there is no heaven to go to. When we read, it's for each person, leave once, and after these, what does it say? Is the judgment. <laughs> the problem is there is no judgment to come as far as a salvation because you can mix salvation, Yeshua and Shafat that's when the whole situation becomes very confusing Either you understand salvation is the spring feast, and then Shafat, or then judgment, or then vengeance, and then it's the autumn feast. You cannot mix those. So then there is no salvation at the end of this age. Now, there are some of the remnant that they are going to be gathering up. They're going to make tiny cities in many places. And those at the end are obviously saved not because of the point that they did what they should be doing, right or not. 
but because the divine has mentioned as far as as not salvation but the destruction now judgment is judgment salvation is salvation there are no other sections that's why the Mashiach Ben Yosef has said in Luke very precisely so then people are preparing themselves for nothing because the measuring stick so to speak used when a person dies is the Torah the prophets the writings now imagine this the Holy Torah is available the prophets the writings barely any people are reading and they are waiting for something that doesn't exist they they want to believe a lie knowingly at the end they're going down because there is no going up Shimon has said very precisely then be concerned with the salvation of your souls now you're talking about the spiritual things or soulish things the divine never changes however our souls must start making decisions now people get defensive because they are ignorant they don't take their time to study they go with the flow and then the flow is wrong that's why the Mashiach has said very precisely only a few are going to find the answer at the end granted some of these troubles were then recorded by what we know as the fathers of the church people they have taken on upon themselves of living out what they translated from the Hebrew manuscripts and they tried to make a statement by living out during their lifetime and they, they made a record of it at the end of it and that's how they perceived the Hamashiach Ben Yosef that lived his life many decades prior of their own time and people they want to learn things with osmosis you know they put the uh, writings next to their minds and then they begin to become knowledgeable So the next time you go to church and pastors they try to manipulate your life to all observe them how obedient they are <laughs> they are not the example and it's your fault if you take their example over you to have a it's your own fault to making their lives as idols of your own they should be humble mentors but they make a statue of themselves that's how they show themselves and then they make the political game oh some of them on the right some of them on the left oh this person is there this person is there you go under that person you go under the other person and then leaders there and and they go up front and they open up their mouth it's only crap Some say, oh, you are a rebel. You're simply not stupid. Shaliak Shaul, known as Paul, 
he was very truthful in what he said. Though we don't find these manuscript in Hebrew, first and second Corinthians, they do not exist in Hebrew. He said very precisely at the end of times they're going to concoct for themselves teachers with the itching ears teaching their own doctrines. Now let me ask you this. What teaching should we be concerned as far as Romans chapter 12? Shouldn't we not be renewing our minds with the scripture, the foundation of the apostles and prophets? Next time I'm going to evaluate more of this section because it's extremely important. Prior of understanding, then the trade layer and then the military layer and then the synchronism of both of these with tabernacle and don't forget there is a third temple coming up and each of these must be precisely synchronized now Yoda have up here has said very precisely be quick to listen and hold your tongue until you gather up the information from the Torah of his word and the prophets then you understand the scripture then you talk this is what it means renewing the mind because when you renew your mind you gather the information so when you talk don't become stupid I know these are very hard words but in a day that there is so much junk so many scoundrels so many people stealing and thank heavens we're not talking about faith at this point in time it only some sections of the holy language in, in its own translation and layering. If you hear this very intently, you're not going to find any kind of a denomination because these denomination do these, these the other denomination do that, and the other denomination do the other. You are hearing simple truths. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up.